Okay, let's kick off this tour of the Figurama display booth at Wonder Festival 2019 with a look at their very first statue that they revealed. And this is, of course, Ragnarok Thor. Uh, very nice uh, entry yeah, for Figurama into the business. Uh, the statue turned out really well. If you're interested in it, I do have a full review and unboxing on the channel. You can check those out. Uh, we also gave this statue away as part of the Statue Awards uh, earlier in 2019. Um, you know, lots of details on this piece. Uh, I, I really like the lightning strike from Mjolnir, how it's like slashing through the guy in the front and it's taking the jaw off the face of that guy there in the, in the top left. Um, so very detailed diorama, lots of story Easter eggs. If you haven't read this comic, it's uh, an IDW comic, uh, independent story from Walt Simonson. Uh, it's a pretty good story. There's a couple hard covers out. Um, so, you know, if you have any interest, go check it out. And then maybe check out this statue here from Figurama. Ragnarok Thor. All right, we're gonna move on to Devilman versus Amon. Uh, an absolutely amazing diorama here. This one sculpted by Caleb Nefson. Uh, this was Figurama's second statue reveal. Uh, it was actually the first to ever ship though. And man, what a way to kick things off for collectors. Uh, th they really knocked it out of the park. I mean, look at look at the wings on uh, Devilman there. It looks like there's light coming through, but that's actually the, an effect of the paint. Uh, all kinds of detail here. Um, Caleb just did an amazing job. Uh, you know, the claws, the teeth, the wings. I mean, look at the tails, uh, the nipple ring there in Ammon. Um, fantastic piece. Uh, they collaborated again on Attack on Titan. Um, and I hope to see more from that team in the future. I, I hope that uh, Caleb gets more work through Figurama because it seems that their styles really connect and produce some amazing stuff. So here's Devilman versus Ammon at Wonder Festival. All right, moving on to Vash the Stampede. Uh, this is a statue that was released earlier this year from Figurama. Um, let me tell you something about this statue. It is a lot bigger than it looks. It occupies a massive amount of space. It's huge, um, but it can really be a centerpiece in your collection, especially if you're a big Trigun fan. Uh, I mean, they really did a lot of nice things with this. I mean, look at the mayhem of the base. Bullets ricocheting all over the place. You got the cat there. Um, you know, his coattails flying all over. Uh, you know, the humanoid typhoon in full glory here. I love the glasses on the face. I have a nice clean paint job on this piece. Uh, sculpt from David Giraud, who did a really nice job here. Um, you know, this is a really nice release from Figurama. Top quality, big, heavy, uh, and, and quality paint. So, uh, I do have full review and unboxing on the channel, so you can check those out if you're interested. But this is Vash the Stampede. All right, so next up is a statue that um, we're pretty familiar with. We saw this last year at, at the Winter Wonder Festival, but this is still kind of a, a new reveal because this is the production sample. This is the actual size that collectors are gonna get. Uh, it is downsized from the one on display last year, which I had a chance to see, and it was enormous. It was a huge piece. It probably would have filled this entire pedestal. It was just massive. It was. Uh, I really, um, I'm glad that they downsized it because this is this is a really nice size. You still get tons of detail here. These, this portrait here is revised from last year, uh, so they worked on the facial um, likeness a little bit. And again, here uh, on um, the one, the, the other portrait with no mask, or sorry, I should say, no hat. He's not wearing a mask. Um, so both of them, uh, they feel improved. Uh, this statue is just, it's stunning. It, it is absolutely stunning. There's detail everywhere. I mean, look at this guy out in front here getting the, his brains blown out uh, by Alucard there. Uh, there's soldiers being enveloped by the hound uh, all over the place. Just everywhere you look, there's details. Look at the bats on the cape. Um, these actually now come pre-attached to the cape. Um, and it came out of the box with no problems, so I really like that. Uh, you're not going to have to spend time adding all those bats uh, individually when you assemble it. I got a chance to help assemble this thing uh, on setup day, and uh, it, it's a monster. It came in two big boxes, uh, one box just for the hound alone, uh, which is a very big, 
heavy piece. Uh, so make sure your shelves have lots of capacity. Um, lots of pieces, so whenever you get it, if you, if you do have this on order, take your time with it. Um, but just so many cool angles with this statue. I mean, everywhere you look, it's almost like you see something new with it. Um, you know, you got hands coming out, you know, soldiers' heads all over the place. You got rubble and debris. Um, look at the eyes on the hound. I mean, each one hand painted. Look at this guy here, with the mask, trying to escape from certain death. Uh, we'll go around the back here. Look, there's another guy, another soldier there. Uh, it, it, there's so much here. It's so awesome to see in person. Uh, so I, I'm really thankful to see this and, and, and get a chance to, to help assemble it. Let's go around the other side here. Give you another look at the uh, we'll call it unmasked portrait. Uh, revised. Nice bright red eyes there. This guy here. Uh, he's not doing so good. I um, love the portraits on these guys. I mean they all look like they are uh, you know about truly about to, to, to die here and you got the guns with the engravings both guns will be engraved uh, just uh, as a note um, here's my favorite guy here I, I don't know why this guy he looks so panicked and desperate um, to get out you look at the back of the base you got this lantern here now this guy here with the the gun pointed up um, if you look in there and, and it doesn't focus very well here but his hand is kind of being pinched under this lantern and uh, you might get a glimpse of it right about there. Um, when you pull that guy's hand out of the box, it looks like it's damaged. I really did think it was damaged, but it's actually keyed just so that lantern fits tightly into place. So just keep that in mind with, uh, if you do have this piece coming. Fantastic piece. I think it, uh, you know, if this is what collectors are going to get, in hand, uh, you, you know, just prepare yourself to uh, to be stunned because it it absolutely is an amazing statue. I I, I love this statue. It turned out absolutely great. There we go. That's Alucard of Helsing. Okay, so next up is the first Tokyo Ghoul release from Figurama. This is Kaneki versus Yamori. Um, this statue just starting to ship to collectors now, so it's just been released. Um, a lot of high praise from collectors. I have this one. Uh, I haven't had a chance to unbox it yet, but I will be posting a, an unboxing video and a review of it. Uh, you can see the uh, the bus stands you get with the statue. I always think that's such a great idea. The extra portraits that you get with the statue are, are very much part of the display, so you want to have them on display. And note that you only get two. You only get one for Kaneki, even though he has two extra heads. Um, the third Kaneki head was added sort of much later on. So um, tons of detail on this one, as usual, with the figure on piece. Look at the flickering light. Um, gives such a creepy vibe. That is intentional, the flickering, just in case you're wondering. On the base, uh, but, you, know, you got uh, the Jason mask. You got the centipede there. Uh, blood bucket spilling blood. Uh, I really like the interaction between the two. Uh, it really looks like they're right in the middle of a, a pretty epic battle. Um, just a, it, it, This is my first time seeing it here at, at Wonder Festival and, and I'm really really impressed with it. Uh, nice size. It's about two feet tall so uh, it's, it's one six scale but uh, still nice presence on this piece. And you can see all the masks around the perimeter of the base. Uh, you know, look at the Kagane of, of Kaneki there. This is in on the base. Nice texturing on uh, Yumori's pants. Muscle detailing. Uh, this piece is sculpted by Keita Okada, um, who's done a, a number of these uh, statues for Figurama. He did uh, Hunter x Hunter, this one here, and also the new Tuka versus Sukiyama, which we're going to look at next. Um, I really like the glossy look they've given the Kagane. It makes it feel kind of alive. Uh, we'll move around to the side here, uh, give you another shot of the blood bucket, uh, the two trays of the, the torture tools. Now underneath that one with the bottle, you can pull that out, just connects with the magnet. Underneath there is the light for the LED feature. So it's just a little button you push under there. Very well hidden, very nice. Uh, another look at the Kagane here. Again, as I said, it's got a, a glossy wet look to it. 
uh, makes it look almost alive. Um, the details around the base are, are really spectacular. Figurama is kind of known for adding those features, the story elements uh, all around the base, give you more than just one scene. They're giving you the whole story, really, with these pieces. So let's move around quickly to the other side, take a look at the chair, um, the back of Yomori's Kagami, same thing. It's, it's got that kind of a bit of a wet look. Uh, here's the other masks on the base. Uh, move back around the front here real quick, give you a quick uh, shot of the front again before we wrap up. Uh, there's Kaneki versus Yamori. This is a production piece. So this is what collectors will receive here. Uh, and I think it looks looks really, really nice. So stay tuned for more on this piece on the channel. All right, so last statue from the Figurama booth, and it is the grand reveal from the event. The brand new Tuka versus Sukiyama uh, Elite fandom statue. This is the follow-up to the Kaneki statue that we just saw and uh, you know fantastic piece. This one's sculpted by Keita Okada as well. Uh, so you get very consistent style between the two pieces which I think is important. They're going to display really really well together. Uh, note that this black rod uh, that's not going to be there in the final piece so don't worry about it. This is the uh, very early prototype. It hasn't been engineered. There's no metal rods inside to hold it up. It was literally just painted in time for the show. So that rod, just temporary. Uh, don't worry about that. It won't be there. Um, we're going to uh, get in close to uh, the statue here in a second. Uh, look at uh, Tsukiyama, the mask version. He's got a very sinister looking smile on his face there. Uh, his, see how his cogany spirals around his arm there, just like in the anime. Uh, really, really nice. The crystal shards shooting off from Tuka's Kagane. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, you look at the rose and the letter that uh, wraps around the perimeter of the base. So these are these are important story elements, is because this is the letter that Sukiyama uh, uh, sent to Tuka, pretending to be Kaneki, inviting her to this battle where he intended to, of course, kill her. Uh, the rose as well was part of that letter uh, to lure her there. Uh, see how uh, you know, the writing goes all the way around the base. Lots of story elements hidden around the statue. Here is the art print. The art print that every statue is going to get. It's very official because this is done by one of the uh, original Tokyo Ghoul artists. This was actually commissioned by the licensor. Um, so very official looking print that each uh, statue is going to come with. I'm going to walk around here to the other side, give me some alternate angles. Uh, so each character will have a swap belt portrait. Uh, you're going to have the unmasked Tsukiyama and the alternate uh, face for Tuka. Uh, and these will have the uh, little display bus. They just weren't ready uh, quite in time for this event. So. Each one will have the mini display bus. Uh, look at that expression on Tuka. Look at the inside of the Kagane. Um, you know, Keita Okada, I mean, he's got such a chiseled uh, look to his sculpts. Uh, it really, you know, mixed with that vibrant paint job, it really looks like it's alive. Uh, you know, another shot here of the, the letter around the base. See how the, the stem of the rose kind of swerves around. There's a lot to look at here. Uh, let's go to the back where you see more Easter eggs. We got the uh, Kaneki eye patch. We got the, the rabbit mask and the letter there as well. Uh, candles uh, over the base, you know, give that cathedral atmosphere where this battle took place. There is a light up feature planned. I think it's going to be mixed into that cathedral window somehow. Um, I'm not 100% sure how, what it's going to look like, but there is a light up feature planned. Um, so stay tuned for that reveal at a later date. This is the grand reveal, as I said, from the event for Figurama. Uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic companion or standalone piece uh, for Tokyo Ghoul fans. Um, that's it. That's the uh, full booth tour from Figurama at Wonder Festival 2019, Summer Edition in Tokyo. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys, and hope you enjoyed it.